Yeah. Okay, so good, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, we 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 are launching our session, which is devoted to the future of science and technology and its social dimension. First of all, uh, let me welcome uh, well, welcome everybody here at our session. Uh, first of all, our speakers uh, speakers from. Madrid now and from uh, Tokyo and from Moscow, of course. Uh, and um, so uh, during the last years, we we, we see the increasing uh, attention paid to to the problem devoted to related to human development and the societal development. Uh, we we evidence the evidence of this in, increase. Uh, we, we we have seen during the last uh, couple of years. During uh, this um, this hard hard times for all humanity, and uh, the 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 we we saw in in more in more uh, acute uh, acute um, form um, many many problems related to, to human beings and to to the society. Uh, they are related to inequality, in, including inequality in uh, in access to, to new technologies and uh, many other issues, which are which are uh, now a subject of uh, studies and subject of uh, research. And the uh, foresight studies are also uh, are also moving towards uh, towards studying human beings, human beings, uh, human. Uh, enhancement uh, physical and the uh, physical and the uh, um, intellectual in enhancement. It includes uh, education, work, and of course uh, health and the uh, life of human beings as such. So our session today will be devoted to social aspects of future of science and technology. We'll have four presentations today. I, I wanted to to mention, by the way, that we are uh, our symposium is uh, uh, is included in in the uh, annual April uh, uh, conference devoted to um, to s s s social studies, and uh, it, it's also uh, is under the auspice of Human Capital Multidisciplinary Research Center. It's a new initiative. And it was a big uh, competition, and high school of economics, uh, to, together with three other uh, institutes, uh, won won in this uh, competition. And we start this big work for next six years. Uh, and uh, so th this session, uh, I hope, will c c contribute to the uh, study of uh, of human uh, human c c c capital. And uh, uh, so. Uh, we, we, we can start now. Uh, I, I will ask uh, our presenters to spend uh, 15 minutes, not more, for their presentation, so that we have five minutes for questions and answers. And after that, we have some um, time for discussion. So everybody can ask questions uh, either by by uh, chat within uh, within our uh, Microsoft Teams or by uh, by uh, by ch ch chatting the uh, YouTube ch 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 channel, uh, we will be uh, will will be uh, managing to, um, to to arrange it in such a way that uh, presenters presenters might uh, see this uh, these uh, questions and uh, answer them. So our first uh, first presentation uh, will be made by Anna Grebinyuk, and it will be devoted to um, to. Uh, uh, Please um, make your slides available. Yeah, devoted to results of our recent uh, work uh, related to identification of uh, of key trends related to human uh, human capital and how science and technology might serve a driver of human capital development. So, Anna, floor the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. If you don't mind, I will uh, speak in Russian, so you can uh, uh, use verse speak uh, for translation. Okay. Uh, в рамках uh, сегодняшней презентации я расскажу uh, 
о результатах проекта по анализу ключевых научно-технологических областей, влияющих на развитие человеческого потенциала. Сначала я хотела бы кратко представить вам методологию проекта. Нами был проведен анализ шести ключевых направлений в области развития человеческого потенциала. Это здоровый образ жизни и правильное питание, медицина, активное долголетие, благоприятные условия труда, комфортная образовательная среда и безопасная окружающая среда и инфраструктура. В рамках каждой из шести рассматриваемых областей проводился анализ глобальных трендов, в соответствии с которыми затем были выявлены ключевые научно-технологические направления. Методология исследования включает в себя интеллектуальный анализ больших данных с использованием системы Айфора, которая содержит свыше 400 миллионов документов, это и научные публикации, статьи профильных СМИ, патенты, гранты, отчеты и другие документы. А также результаты были уточнены и валидированы с участием экспертов. Итак, каким будет человек будущего, человек 21 века? Он ответственно подходит к своему здоровью, он носит устройство для мониторинга показателей организма и находится на постоянной связи со своим лечащим врачом. Он придерживается здорового образа жизни, соблюдает диету на основе геномных данных или исследования микробиома, занимается спортом. По персонально разработанной программе использует датчики для анализа эффективности тренировок. Человек в будущем может использовать бионический протез или искусственно выращенный орган в случае необходимости, а также стимулирует свою когнитивную активность с помощью чипа импланта. И реализация такого образа будущего, который я нарисовала, требует в первую очередь технологических решений. Прежде всего, на развитие человеческого потенциала будут влиять биотехнологии, медицинские технологии, также технологии в области транспорта и энергетики, но наибольшей трансформационной силой обладают цифровые технологии, которые затрагивают и меняют все сферы жизни человека. Наиболее перспективная область в этом контексте перечислена на слайде, и именно эти технологические направления будут определять возможности для жизни человека в будущем. Дальше я хотела бы сосредоточиться на результатах исследований, перейти к первому направлению. Это здоровый образ жизни и правильное питание. Слева на слайде вы видите карту ключевых разработчиков по каждому направлению, которые мы как раз сформировали по результатам интеллектуального анализа. Спрос на технологии в этой области определяет ключевые поведенческие факторы, влияющие на повышение уровня заболеваемости и смертности, это гиподинамия и неправильное питание. И, и технологии призваны как раз ответить на это вызовы. В первую очередь это технологии функционального операционализированного питания, синтетические продукты питания и альтернативные технологии получения белка. Помимо этого наблюдается активное развитие носимых технологий, как в формате самостоятельных устройств, так и в виде умной одежды и обуви, которые позволяют контролировать ключевые параметры организма человека, проводить раннюю диагностику заболеваний и мониторинг критических состояний. Эти технологии работают на профилактику развития болезней и гиподинамии за счет а, мониторинга вредных привычек и а, наглядного отображения уровня физической активности человека. Также активно развиваются технологии биохакинга, это относительно новые а, направления, а, которые а, призваны увеличить продолжительность а, жизни человека и раскрыть а, потенциал его организма. Более подробно я хотела бы остановиться на технологиях создания новых источников пищи, которые позволяют удовлетворить растущий спрос на продовольствие. А с учетом роста населения к 2100 году нам будет необходимо нарастить производство продуктов питания на 80%. Также они позволяют обойти ограничения традиционного сельского хозяйства, удовлетворить специфические потребности, связанные с распространением вегетарианства и других более гибких пищевых концепций. Уже сейчас созданы мясные и молочные продукты из растительного сырья, из лаковых и бобовых, отдельных видов 
грибов и водорослей, а также, например, из насекомых, которые по своим вкусовым качествам не, уступ, не уступают традиционным аналогам. Развитие клеточных технологий и тканевой инженерии позволяет создавать мясо в пробирке, тем самым полностью исключив процесс выращивания из обоих животных. Помимо этого, таким образом мы получаем биологически чистое мясо без пентагенов, которые могут содержаться в организме животного. Создаются геномодифицированные продукты, отличающиеся улучшенной текстурой, вкусом, длительным сроком хранения и другими показателями. Прогресс в области медицины обеспечит прежде всего развитие геномных, клеточных и регенеративных технологий, синтетической биологии и нейротехнологий. Внедрение информационных технологий в здравоохранении обеспечит цифровую трансформацию всей системы, наблюдается взрывной рост рынка телемедицины, малоинвазивных систем хирургии, робототехнических систем, систем биомониторинга. Все эти технологии позволяют перейти к концепции а, точной медицины, что предполагает персонализацию терапии и смещение акцента на предупреждение а, возникновения заболеваний. А, прогресс в области геномных технологий об условиях смещения фокуса с лечения болезни на лечение конкретного а, человека, трансформируя а, не только процессы разработки, а, тестирования и назначения лекарств, но и систему здравоохранения в целом. За счет быстро генерируемого большого объема биоданных и новых методов их анализа и интерпретации, в том числе с использованием систем на базе системы искусственного интеллекта, растет понимание связи отдельных генов и их мутации с рисками развития заболеваний. Генетические данные пациента используются для подбора оптимальных стратегий лечения, и это обеспечит снижение времени и стоимости терапии, сокращение возможных побочных эффектов. Результаты молекулярной диагностики также используются для выявления индивидуальных предрасположенностей и формирования персонального плана для профилактики терапии. Повышение продолжительности жизни людей привело к увеличению доли пожилых в общей структуре населения и усилило внимание к условиям их жизни, включая доступную инфраструктуру и благоустройство, создание условий для активной жизни, в том числе умственной, физической и социальной активности. В связи с этим развиваются антивозрастные технологии, направленные на увеличение продолжительности жизни, замедление процесса старения, повышение когнитивной активности пожилых людей. Важным блоком являются технологии для независимой безопасной жизни, включающей в себя решения по обеспечению базовых потребностей, таких как гигиена, питание, одевание, технологии мониторинга ежедневной активности, условий проживания, домашней системы безопасности и реагирования. Информационные технологии используются для расширения коммуникационных возможностей и социальной включенности. Отдельно я хотела бы остановиться на ассистивных или вспомогательных технологиях. Их основная целевая аудитория – это как раз одинокие пожилые люди, люди с ограниченными возможностями, больные с хроническими заболеваниями или психическими нарушениями. Они позволяют пожилым людям решать многие повседневные задачи, продолжать жить в домашних условиях, быть более мобильными, участвовать в общественной жизни. Благодаря ассистивным технологиям уменьшается потребность в услугах опекунов, снижается нагрузка на организацию системы здравоохранения и социальной поддержки. В настоящее время более 1 миллиарда человек нуждается в одном или более вспомогательных продуктов, и только один из десяти имеет к ним доступ. К 2030 году наибольшими высокотехнологичными рынками в области ассистивных технологий станут роботизированные помощники для незрячих, голосовые ассистенты на базе искусственного интеллекта, электронные собеседники, помощники, мобильные роботы, помощники, экзоскелеты и средства дополненной реальности. Условия труда и кадровый рынок также сильно трансформируются под влиянием новых технологий. В последние годы отмечается широкое распространение технологий гибкой и удаленной занятости с помощью различных интернет-платформ, особенно востребованы новые типы организации рабочего процесса стали в связи с пандемией COVID-19. Получают также распространение гибкие практики работы в проектных группах, такие как Agile, Scrum, Kanban, 
новые технологии значительно меняют процесс поиска и управления персоналом, происходит уберизация этого процесса, создаются новые способы привлечения работников, например, CRM-системы, которые систематизируют, систематизируют данные о кандидатах и дают возможность сформировать золотой кадровый резерв. Современное программное обеспечение позволяет проводить аналитику кадровых ресурсов на высоком уровне, в частности, технологии анализа больших данных позволяют в автоматическом режиме оценивать уровень чекучки, скорость поиска новых сотрудников для различных позиций и так далее. Роботизация и развитие искусственного интеллекта обуславливают структурную перестройку рынка труда за счет снижения трудоинтенсивности и трудоинтенсивности производства при одновременном повышении производительности. Развитие робототехники, технологии промышленного интернета вещей и предиктивной аналитики приведут к появлению умных фабрик, которые полностью исключают человека из, из процесса производства. Цифровизация бизнес-процессов приводит также к сокращению технологическому усложнению или полному исчезновению, исчезновению ряда традиционных профессий, усиливаются разрывы между кадрами высокой и низкой квалификации. Серьезным социальным вызовом становится проблема дальнейшего использования высвобождающейся низкоквалифицированной рабочей силы. Ключевым драйвером трансформации сферы здравоохранения являются в первую очередь информационные технологии, их распространение предъявляет новые требования к знаниям и навыкам, которые получают обучающиеся, а также они сами, в принципе, меняют весь образовательный процесс. В течение последних лет во многих странах были приняты специализированные программы по цифровизации сферы образования. Аня, две минуты. Хорошо. Новые технологии позволяют персонализировать образовательный процесс, учитывая индивидуальные особенности учащихся вовлекать учеников и так далее. Технологии онлайн и дистанционного образования активно развивались до 2020 года, однако с, с учетом пандемии на дистанционку на момент перешли сразу целые страны, развивались различные платформы, онлайн-курсы, электронные библиотеки, облачные и электронные образовательные ресурсы и так далее. Растет объем доступного образовательного контента, увеличивается гибкость обучения и доступность, но не надо забывать о проблеме цифрового неравенства, которое может стать барьером для получения качественного образования для отдельных групп граждан. Ну и последнее направление – это создание безопасной окружающей среды, затрагивает разные типы технологий в области экологии, энергетики, транспорта, переработки новых материалов для строительства и сферы ЖКХ. Происходит оптимизация производства и переход к систему замкнутого цикла. До минимума сокращается объем используемых ресурсов, растет энергоэффективность, активно развивается технология снижения негативного воздействия на окружающую среду и экологию и климат. Происходит переход к возобновляемым источникам энергии. Большие изменения происходят в области транспорта. Сейчас существующие системы не являются устойчивыми и безопасными для окружающей среды. Происходит распространение автомобилей с электрическим водородным двигателем, а также создается соответствующая инфраструктура. Внедряется система интеллектуального управления. В отдельных странах происходит внедрение решений на основе основанных на принципе mobility as a service, мобильность как услуга, которая предполагает интеграцию информационных технологий и организационных мер и позволяет персонифицировать городские транспортные услуги под индивидуальное предпочтение каждого пользователя. Скорость распространения трендов в области развития человеческого потенциала и разработки внедрения новых технологий зависит от ряда драйверов и барьеров. С одной стороны, общество, в обществе усиливаются гуманистические настроения, 
все больше внимания уделяется социальным проблемам, правам человека, его здоровью, возможностям для личностного роста как со стороны отдельных людей, так и государства в целом. Распространение информационных технологий и биотехнологий дает делай доступными большое число девайсов и услуг. При этом высокая стоимость разработки и внедрения новых технологий, отложенный эффект от их реализации, который проявляется только спустя 15-20 лет, и космос существующих систем, а также ряд этических проблем тормозят их реализацию. В связи с этим ускоренное развитие человеческого потенциала требует не просто развития перечисленных новой технологии, но также формирование среды и инфраструктуры и условий для их успешной реализации и внедрения. Спасибо большое за внимание. Благодарю. Аня, я, насколько вижу, вопросов в чате, по крайней мере, я не вижу. Мы немножко выбиваемся из графика, поэтому у меня предложение сейчас начать следующую презентацию. А вопросы, если будут, вы задавайте в чат, и мы ответим, а, так сказать, авторы презентации ответят в конце, в конце нашей сессии. Следующая презентация у нас будет сделана научным сотрудником Национального института научно-технической политики Японии, доктор Урашима. Она будет посвящена результатам 6-11 прогноза научно-технологического развития Японии. Я не знаю, все ли из вас знают, что Япония проводит такие прогнозы, начиная с 70-го года, и вот сейчас завершен очередной 11-й прогноз. И в нем большое внимание уделяется вопросам развития общества и человека. И вот мы хотели бы услышать сегодня презентацию доктора Рошима. So the, the floor is yours, Konika. You can start. Konika, are you with us? Yes, I think so. Mm. But somehow it doesn't work. Um, Uh, would you like us uh, to help you with uh, sharing the screen? Maybe so. I try one more time, but... Uh, oh, могу загрузить, попробовать презентацию. I don't know. Хорошо, Анна, давайте. Сейчас попробуем. Mm -hmm. okay, yes, okay. Please, please do so, because it seems doesn't work from uh, my side. I don't know why. Okay, we will try. Just a second. Mm. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, скажите, пожалуйста, видно презентацию? Да, видно. Все хорошо. Okay, you can go on. We see your presentation. Uh, please let me know when uh, to list uh, the presentation. So we, we show the presentation. Kunika, we show the presentation from our computer. So you just uh, go ahead and ask to, to switch the slides uh, when it's necessary, okay? Оля, отключите, пожалуйста, мой микрофон. Kuniko, can you hear us? We, we cannot hear you. Kuniko. 
Bunyi kau. Оля, а вы показываете презентацию или кто? Анна или... показывает. Анна. А у Куника включен микрофон? Да, был включен. Сейчас Алло. я проверю. Алло. Вы тут? Значит, я вам сейчас поставил ссылку. Сергей Анатольевич, выключите микрофон, пожалуйста. Да. Это мой Значит, микрофон, я Александр Васильевич. Извините. Что там случилось? Конико, can you hear us? Can you please speak? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes we, we can, can hear you. you. Please go, go ahead. Oh, we are... Okay. Окей. So, uh, I'd like to explain two issues today. Uh, the first of all, I'd like to explain a uh, history of uh, our basic plan and also uh, the current the sixth uh, uh, basic plan is uh, ki kind of continuous uh, from uh, the fifth basic plan. So I will explain for this uh, fifth basic plan and uh, also detail of the sixth uh, uh, the basic plan. Next, please. Yes. Next, please. Okay. Uh, this is uh, our history of uh, our science and technology basic plan. Actually, we started uh, this basic plan from uh, 1995, and the first one started in 96. So this basic plan is a five years plan. So uh, the first first one was uh, just uh, you know we needed to announce that okay we are going to uh, determine all our science and technology policy based on this basic plan. Then from the second one we made a prioritized uh, prioritized area which is life science, materials, uh, nanotechnology, and uh, information and environment. So. Then the third one also continued from the second one because our basic plan is the, 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 sorry, the target of basic plan is 20 years from that period. So therefore, just five years, uh, it's nothing to change too, too much. So therefore, we continue the, this third one, um, but we um, learned that the, if there is no priority area, then uh, the, the such area couldn't get the many budget as uh, the, uh, the compared with the other area. So therefore, for the third one, we still uh, kept uh, the priority prioritized the area, but also we observed um, not priority the area such as uh, mathematics, for example, because mathematics is very basic uh, knowledge for everything, especially now uh, policy determined based on evidence, which means we need to collect lots of data. So therefore, uh, someone who learned uh, mathematics pr will be the good candidate of this uh, analyst. So therefore, uh, we uh, uh, observed such a uh, area also. Okay. For then the fourth science and technology basic plan, which is started from 2011 of April, actually not April, September, because in 2011th of March, we got a huge tsunami and a disaster. So therefore, we needed to change our um, plan 
just to um, before starting the, this basic plan, because we are following fiscal years, which means our um, plan started from uh, uh, April, but as I said, uh, we got a huge disaster. So therefore we needed to reach, rethink about uh, the, this basic plan. So actually, so, so fourth science and technology basic plan started uh, September of 2011. And uh, that time we completely changed our policy because up to the third basic plan, we uh, enhanced the technology. But from the fourth one, we observed the future uh, society uh, the first. Then what kind of technology we need to realize such a future a good vision. So therefore we completely changed the, the, our policy from the fourth one. And the fifth one, as you know that we announced the society 5.0, which is the super smart society. Okay, uh, go to next page, please. Okay, so this is the detail of the fifth uh, um, uh, basic plan. So as I said, uh, because we, uh, our situation um, uh, in 2015, five years ago, um, we learned that the, our population has been decreasing. And also uh, we are the face, faced on the aging society. So therefore, we must develop very smart society for the future, especially. And also our population decreasing, which means also we need to reconstruct the university systems because now we have 780 universities. This is too much. So therefore we need to change some systems of universities. And now many people is talking about open science and uh, open innovation as well. So this uh, uh, issue also co continue to the sixth one. Okay, then also uh, our uh, economic situation was not too good. And uh, so therefore we need to make a, um, some venture business, especially uh, uh, based on the universities. So therefore, they call challenging for the new businesses. Okay, then we next step has been um, surveying the Tayden, which means it's it's kind of uh, same uh, it's the same question, and uh, we ask the same question every year, uh, same person. Then what is the difference? between the last year to the this year or so on. So we continue the, this survey and also foresight as well. And also, um, I don't know your country, but the, our country's PhD student couldn't find the job. So this is a big problem. And uh, again, I said that, that uh, uh, we have uh, too much universities. So therefore, uh, you, a PhD candidate doesn't uh, get uh, the academic uh, position at the university. So therefore we need to think about how to uh, make a, a PhD uh, course, uh, especially for the economical uh, situation. Okay, next please. Okay, so this is the Society 5.0. You might already know that uh, uh, we are focused on uh, aging society and also um, uh, ICT and AI, so on. And uh, now many uh, people is using uh, uh, AI, but also uh, we are trying to use drones as a, a trans uh, uh, um, a carrier service uh, instead of a human. But if drone made some problem, I mean accident, if a drone carrying the uh, parcel, then uh, they drop it, then someone injured, then who will be the in charge of this accident? So such a um, law and regulation we must think about 
not only the technology, but also we have to think about such a law and the regulation as well. So autonomous car is the same situation. So now um, our, our automobile company, such as Toyota, Nissan, Honda, is uh, trying to uh, sell the autonomous car, which is uh, pretty good, but still too expensive. But anyway, we need to enhance such a technology for our especially aging society. Okay, next please. So, okay, so now I'm going to talk about the six basic plan, which is uh, uh, basically same as uh, the fifth one, but we are more observed so social issue, especially when we are saying that the science and technology basic plan, which is not too much included the human and the social science issues. But this time we um, announced that uh, and we changed the law, which used to be science and technology basic law, but now we added innovation. So now we call science and technology innovation basic law. So, um, so which is the, um, we are more concerned about human and the social sciences. So when we uh, do a foresight survey, normally we invite only a, um, a engineer or a science uh, um, people, not the human uh, science issues people. So, but uh, now our next foresight survey must include such a, uh, like a literature or a human development scientist as well. So this is a big, uh, the, a big the difference between the fifth one and the sixth one. Then also uh, now, uh, of course, everybody is now struggling uh, COVID-19 and uh, we uh, have a very good technology. However, we couldn't make a vaccine by ourselves. Uh, actually, we could, but we don't have any good uh, facility to, to manufacturing. So therefore, we need to uh, consider about such a situation for the future. So therefore, um, we are now uh, struggling how to realize for the, this uh, basic plan. Okay, next, please. Five minutes left. Okay, okay. So this is uh, again uh, the uh, the summary of uh, uh, basic plan. Okay, we uh, made three pillars of science and technology innovation, which is the strength uh, innovation power, and R and D, and the human resource and development, uh, education and the human resource development. So uh, innovation power means, uh, of course, uh, we need to make a lot of. Uh, um, good uh, business and also uh, we have to consider about the environment issue as well. So and now currently uh, we have uh, many earthquakes, small earthquakes, but uh, historically uh, the huge earthquake in the middle of Tokyo. So therefore we have to prepare for such a disaster uh, issue. So then uh, we are now uh, also Mm, the uh, constructing uh, many infrastructure such as the highway and so on. And uh, around the of course, is uh, very important. But as I say, we don't have many uh, young PhD students. So therefore, we have to uh, think about many issues for this uh, around the issue. Then education and human resources. Because now young people is not too much interested in science and technology because of uh, the maybe STEM uh, education. So we have to enhance uh, this uh, STEM uh, education, especially in Japan, for the elementary school students and so on. Okay, so uh, then uh, aiming social image. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, um, maybe I, I will skip, sorry. So go to next page, please. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the, the, the our 11th foresight survey. Uh, next, please. 
Next, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, our foresight started in 1971, as you know, and uh, we should celebrate the 50th anniversary, but uh, somehow we couldn't because of the, this uh, um, busy uh, season. Okay, so next, please. Okay, so this is our design of 11 for size survey. So we had the for the horizon scanning and the visioning and the, the part three uh, Delphi trend, uh, uh, ST uh, trend means it's we did the Delphi survey. And then part four is scenarios. Okay, next please. Okay, next please. Um, Okay, because of uh, the time, so I will skip the main, uh, some of the slide, but uh, so we made uh, uh, 50 uh, visions and the futures, so you can see here. Okay, I will give you the, this uh, PowerPoint uh, so you can read it later. Okay, next please. Yeah, so this is the uh, results of the Delphi survey. So we ha have uh, uh, 702 topics, and each topic uh, can show the such uh, data. Okay, next, please. And uh, this is a realization technology year and the social year. Okay, next, please. And this is uh, what is the uh, key uh, issue for the realization, like uh, uh, f the, it needs fund or LC or uh, 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 change the regulation or the so on. Okay, next please. Okay, so finally we needed to make uh, some scenarios. So which means we needed to combine the 50 visions and the 702 verified topics. Okay. Then we made the scenario. Okay, next, please. Okay, sorry, I didn't have enough time, so I didn't prepare for scenarios, but actually this is a, a summary of the six basic plan. And sorry, uh, because we just studied this one and uh, there is no English version, so I needed to translate it, but uh, 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 believe it or not, okay, our uh, foresight, um, design, the 11th foresight design, is very much for the, this uh, basic plan. So we are very proud of our foresight survey, for, especially for the 11th one. So, okay, next please. Okay, so this is the last one. Okay, now please don't forget, we have an Olympic game. Uh, in this uh, uh, August, so please watch. Unfortunately, no one could come to Japan from outside of Japan, but please watch the TV. And uh, we studied the, the relay of the, this torch relay, so you can see the website. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, kind attention. Okay, thank you very much, Kuniko, for your interesting presentation. Uh, we'll definitely be watching uh, Olympic Games. Yes. We can be sure all, all, all Russian people are very much uh, like very much uh, Olympic Games and will definitely be following the events there. Uh, thank you very much. If there are no questions, uh, may I ask you just one short question? Sure. Uh, when when the results will be available in English? What do you think? <laughs> I hope next month. Next month. Uh, yeah, because because well. because uh, cabinet office is in charge of this, so not mm -hmm. us. So therefore, I, uh, I I'm not sure exact date, but uh, hopefully next month. And everything will be available: scenarios and the uh, Delphi, Delphi survey and everything. Yeah. Yeah, everything very, is. Very to the we would like yeah. to make a comparative analysis with our uh, our issues and the Japanese issues and the, very good. how they uh, interconnect. Okay, so thank you very much. Since, thank you so much. Since we are lagging behind the schedule, so yeah, sorry. maybe maybe we'll uh, we'll leave the questions to the end of the session. Now uh, there is a next presentation. Uh, uh, it will be made by Kirill Bukhovsky from our institute. Uh, it will be devoted to innovation, innovative instruments of funding uh, related to social uh, social issues in the field of uh, health care. 
So, Kikiril, the, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, dear colleagues. Do you hear me? Can you see the slide? Yes, everything fine. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, so, first of all, let me um, welcome everyone and thank for the opportunity to participate in this uh, conference and to talk about uh, innovative funding instruments for socially important healthcare goals. So, as we all can see, the importance of healthcare and its development uh, uh, increased uh, dramatically through the recent years because of the pandemic uh, and because of increasing of other uh, social uh, of other diseases and other social uh, tasks uh, that challenges the humankind. Um, uh, and thus, uh, the World Health Organization um, set it. Um, number of sustainable development goals uh, that includes um, uh, social goals uh, and healthcare goals and um, economical goals. Uh, and the um, healthcare is an essential part of uh, this uh, project of this movement. So uh, universal health uh, coverage was adopted as one of the targets under the Sustainable Development Goal and its third edition to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. And it was in, uh, includes access to the quality, to essential healthcare services, and to safe, effective, and affordable, and affordable medicines and vaccines as well as the protection against financial risk. Uh, besides this, um, uh, the increase in um, requirements for healthcare in the recent years also means that the funding should be um, increased uh, in a very uh, quick and a very effective manner, and uh, that results in gaps, especially in low and middle income countries, uh, that is currently estimated almost uh, 400 uh, billion of US dollars. And um, the prognosis are negative, so they tell this gap can increase even more. And uh, that's the point uh, where the um, innovative funding comes to spotlight. Uh, so, uh, when we focus on the healthcare goals in Russia, there is a national project, healthcare, uh, developed to achieve uh, such socially important healthcare goals. It was deployed in 2019 and uh, it's intended to be five years long, uh, with a budget of uh, $23 billion. Uh, so the uh, Two general targets uh, declared by this project is ensuring the sustainable development of uh, the population in Russia and increasing life expectancy. Uh, and the milestones are set uh, for a five year long period and 10 year long period. Uh, so, uh, uh, um, the project uh, unifies efforts of healthcare system, scientific research and development companies and institutions in the field of medicine. And if we look at the list of its objectives, we can say that it follows uh, the next tracks. First of all, the reduction of mortality and thus increasing the lifetime of people uh, the second one is fulfilling national healthcare with the amount of organizations and qualified staff required to provide medical coverage in the country. Medical coverage in the country. And the third track, as we can see, is to upgrade current processes. Uh, it can be uh, processes for medical support, such as waiting time in the queue in medical organization, or simplifying the prescribing process. And um, uh, the digitalization of our life in all the fields of social and economic um, uh, also provides um, the healthcare with new instruments that could uh, uh, upgrade these processes uh, relatively quickly. Uh, for example, uh, in Russia, there is um, uh, also a number of end-to-end uh, -end recording systems uh, that uh, keeps uh, the information about 
patients and the medical treatment they already received or they require. Uh, so when we speak about socially important healthcare goals, uh, we should uh, think about two directions. Uh, first direction is uh, dealing with diseases themselves. So the government of Russian Federation approved a list of socially significant diseases. Um, as you can see from the slide, uh, it's a list of uh, well-known infections that uh, really affects uh, human beings that have uh, rather high mortality and uh, uh, rather high uh, contagiosity. So it really is social, uh, so that can be socially hazardous. And um, another track is uh, protection of the most vulnerable categories of people, such as disabled persons, such as, as um, small children, senior people, uh, such as people facing poverty, and um, the people that are suffering from diseases with, let's say, low social acceptance, such as uh, HIV uh, or tuberculosis, because we know there is a lot of uh, biases about uh, these um, diseases and the people suffering from these diseases in the societies worldwide. And to protect them, make their life more, uh, make their life uh, with better quality is uh, one of the general goals. So, uh, to fulfill all these goals, we need financing and innovative funding is uh, one of the keys. First, let's say about the term itself, because it's widely used nowadays with different meanings. Uh, we suppose that uh, innovative funding means uh, all the kinds of financing mechanisms that are used to efficiently raise and deploy new funds for uh, developing A. Uh, it's a range of modern mechanisms uh, to raise additional funds uh, through innovative projects such as mixed contributions, taxes, public-private partnership, uh, market-based financial transactions, and so on. Uh, so we uh, use uh, such classification as uh, um, presented on the slide. Um, just let me give you a few cases about it. For example, a result-based financing uh, such as debt swaps when uh, when uh, countries with uh, small budgets uh, can uh, swap a part of their international debt uh, to uh, a similar amount uh, that they will uh, redirect for healthcare goals inside their countries. Or um, traditional based financing means that uh, in public private sector, uh, the money will be delivered to a company that's researching, development, developing, purchasing uh, some treatment when the uh, milestones are reached. Uh, a good case of catalytic funding, I think, is the pneumococcal advanced market commitment. It's a mechanism that supports um, by providing a financial incentive to manufacturers to invest in research and development uh, for new vaccines. Uh, and governments or uh, organizations commit to buy or subsidize the purchase of certain number of such vaccines at a given price. Impact investing is um, another way of uh, direct finance, you know, sometimes blended finance of um, such projects and social responsible investing is um, uh, is issuing uh, mutual bonds, uh, social bonds. For example, the International Finance Facility for Immunization issues bonds in the capital markets, converting long-term government pledges into immediately available cash resources. And uh, the pledges are used to repay uh, their bondholders. So they raised, as far as we know, over uh, six uh, billion US dollars this way. Mm. And, Five minutes left. Okay. Uh, and another mm, another class of this is uh, taxation channels uh, beyond well-known um, uh, earmarked 
taxes like uh, I don't know cigarette tax or alcohol tax. Uh, there is a so-called voluntary taxing, for example, uh, unit aid and international facility for the purchase of drugs against AIDS, malaria and tuberculosis is supported by so-called air ticket solidarity levy or a tax on airline tickets when the purchaser of the ticket uh, spends about two dollars and the dollar, uh, those money goes directly to healthcare goals. Uh, so, uh, Financial instruments for sustainable development are generally focused on um, financing mechanisms. Um, and we suppose that in a few years, innovation uh, financing will face uh, similar shares uh, and the financing mechanisms in innovative financing will prevail as well. Um, Okay, uh, when we speak about uh, healthcare funding in Russia, there is uh, three major types of it. First of all, state financed projects, uh, when uh, the money comes from the state budgets, is a very solid way, but um, it's rather slow way because uh, when um, uh, the society faces uh, new um, uh, uh, new uh, diseases or new dangers, it always takes time to redirect uh, the funds. Another way is non-profit organizations, it can be state-owned like Agency for Strategic Initiatives, uh, which um, launches a number of research and development projects in healthcare, or it can be charitable, charitable foundations and trusts with their own goals and support. And commercial organizations, uh, we um, can see that uh, there is a number of uh, large corporations and companies that uh, owns a uh, number of uh, very modern laboratories that have a very good um, expertise uh, in healthcare research and development, and uh, sometimes they face uh, 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 tasks uh, which can be rather low. Uh, profitable uh, and uh, that's the field for uh, public-private uh, partnerships and concessions. Uh, so when we speak about any project, about funding any project in healthcare, uh, it usually uses two markers to evaluate costs of this project and its uh, medical value. It's daily and quality, disability adjusted life year and quality adjusted life year. And those numbers uh, uh, helps make decisions if uh, the participants should run this project or if reconfigure it, and if the state will um, come into the share or it will be a commercial finance only. Uh, One minute. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, let me be brief. Uh, as we can see, uh, the duration of healthy life is. Uh, good example of um, uh, of uh, investing money in um, healthcare goals and systems. Uh, we suppose that innovative funding in healthcare will take more and more share of the overall funding market and uh, the level of spending on healthcare in Russia will also increase. Uh, and the future of uh, this uh, mechanism, we think a public-private sector will uh, strive and thrive, and uh, uh, private companies will uh, go on because their expertise is crucial to create social changes in healthcare. Uh, so I also have a number of um, cases in my presentation. It will be uh, it, uh, you can. Uh, uh, have access to it a little bit later. And uh, at the last I want to say, there is a number of good, uh, well-known providers. Uh, for example, uh, Product Red is a mechanism supporting the global funds to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and the mechanism uh, lets global companies contribute a share of their profits on goods from sales branded with such trademarks as, for example, from Okay, and um, so let me uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, Let's... okay, thank you very much.
there's an echo. Okay, I will yeah. next probably if there are no questions, I, I don't see questions uh, so far. So our next presentation will be made by uh, our old friend uh, uh, Jose Cardero. Um, he has so many affiliations, so I, I, I cannot. It will I will it will take few minutes to just to, to mention all of them. Uh, he's one of the founders of Singularity University. He works with the Millennium Project and he's a fellow of the World Academy of Arts and Science and so on. So, uh, Jose is the author of uh, one of the best sellers, which is called The Death of Death. Uh, it will soon be published in Russia under the name Smerch Dozhna Umirite. Uh, so we asked uh, Jose to share his views uh, in this respect because it's it's uh, immediately related to, to the human human beings. It's uh, one of the key issues. Maybe we uh, were we were discussing humanity uh, has been discussing during many many years and maybe hundreds of years. So, uh, Jose, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it is a pleasure to be with you to be talking about. Uh, my latest book, The Death of Death, coming out in Russian, especially now in terms of COVID, uh, because we see that COVID and all diseases are related to aging. And um, COVID is a small pandemic in relative terms compared to other pandemics, like the Spanish flu that killed 50 million people 100 years ago, even though it, it was not a Spanish. It began in the USA or the bubonic plague, the Black Death, that killed a third of the European population. One out of three people died in Europe. So horrible pandemic. And so COVID is small. However, there have been incredible amounts of money put by governments. Just the US government, over $2 trillion. And companies, uh, billions and billions of dollars. Worldwide, by now, it's already over $11 trillion, and it will be more. However, this is a small pandemic again, and I have been vaccinated, so I am very happy to tell you I was vaccinated with the German-American uh, vaccine, BioNTech-Pfizer, and so I hope to go back to Russia soon. But uh, not just COVID is related to aging. All diseases are related to aging. And the older you are, the more probability you have to die of influenza, cancer, Alzheimer's, heart attacks. In fact, all diseases, all are related to aging. Um, Non-contagious diseases, obviously. Um, like when you are 20, you don't really get uh, heart attacks or Alzheimer's or cancer. But when you age, you get more and more diseases. So the main enemy, the mother of all diseases is aging. And that is why we have to cure aging. We need to stop aging. Three years ago, a friend of mine, David Good, uh, who studied in Cambridge, Cambridge, England, and I also studied in Cambridge, but Cambridge, Massachusetts, we got together to write this book about what is going to happen in the next 20 to 30 years, thanks to advances in biotech and medicine. And we published first in Spanish, uh, the book called The Death of Death in Spanish, La Muerte de la Muerte, that was simultaneously number one and number five. Number one in paper, number five in electronic format in Kindle with Amazon. It was also a major bestseller in Mexico, in Argentina, in Colombia, in Peru, in Venezuela, all over Latin America. So much that actually I ran for the European Parliament. I was a Spanish candidate for the European Parliament and I got about uh, 7,000 votes, which is not bad for the first time in just uh, a couple of uh, months uh, from my city in Madrid. I brought these ideas about longevity, even immortality for the first time in history to the Spanish elections for the European Parliament. And so I published later my book in uh, Portuguese and then in French with the same name, the death of death in Portuguese and also in French. And now it's coming out in Russian. Uh, we still have to decide on the final cover. If you want to vote, please tell me you like more one or 
uh, on the left, the one which is on black, or two, which is on white, um, which cover you like the most for uh, the book in Russian. But after Russian, it will come out in Chinese. And you can see the proposed covers for China. Actually, longevity or immortality. My book will be called Immortality in Chinese. Uh, it's a top priority of the government of China. In fact, it is the People's Publishing House in Beijing, founded by Mao Zedong himself, uh, that will publish my book because longevity and rejuvenation is a national priority for China today, because the population of China will begin declining soon, very quickly, because of the one-child policy. And China is expected to lose 700 million people by the end of the century. That is hard to believe, 700 million people less if the trend continues and the Chinese are committed to stop that trend, as I hope also Russia and Japan, whose populations are also declining now. Uh, thanks to people from the higher school of economics, like Alex uh, Chulok, I had a fantastic interview that he organized and performed with um, RBC, Russian business, and also Alexander Sokolov, I am immortally grateful to you for writing a nice testimonial, a nice sentence for the book in Russian that will be appearing soon. Uh, basically, the idea has to do with the singularity and technological convergence. Uh, we talk that we will have immortality of the hardware and immortality of the software, both between 2029 and 2045. This has been reviewed by many, many publications like Time Magazine, a complete uh, issue of Time Magazine about 2045. And you can see the subtitle, The Year Man Becomes Immortal. So we should be able to become immortal uh, by the latest, by 2045, through rejuvenation technologies. These ideas were popularized by my friend, also from MIT, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Ray Kurzweil, who founded uh, Singularity University, and it was one of the founding faculty with him. And he talks about immortality and the singularity by 2045. He will be releasing a new book uh, this summer called The Singularities Nearer, Nearer, because he's totally convinced that this will happen at the latest by 2045, because changes keep on happening exponentially, faster, smaller, cheaper, and better. And this is happening in almost all technologies. As all of you know, with computers, how we went from memories of 1K to 1 tera in the last 40 years, and this continues and will increase. And also, uh, for our brains, medicine, biotechnology. Uh, we are talking now about creating a fourth layer of the brain, a neocortex that will give us super intelligence because the brain is complex, but it can be even more complex, more connected, faster. Uh, the brain today has about 10 to the 17 operations per second. That is a brain and computational capability. But we can improve that, and we will. Like companies, uh, including Neuralink, that just released a few days ago, a brain connection from a monkey um, to the cloud and to play video games, for example. This is happening in the next 10 years, 20 years at the latest. We will connect our brains to the cloud. Um, Costs are dropping also in biotechnology, in medicine, uh, at incredibly fast speeds. Uh, you can look at the genome sequence that cost over $1 billion, and it took 13 years. And now you can do it for as little as $100 in one hour. And this will continue dropping. This is doubly exponential, exponential in cost and exponential in time. And there is also synthetic biology. Uh, as people know, uh, the first artificial virus was created in the year 2000. Viruses are very small and very simple. 
uh, including COVID, COVID-19, it is possible to create viruses like COVID-19. Uh, in 2010, an artificial bacteria was created, and we expect that by 2045, we can change, improve the human genome, modify our genetics. And that is why we also say that aging is a disease, but fortunately, a curable disease that we will cure in the next few years. Why? Because we have been able already to double the life expectancy of mice. Uh, we have multiplied by four the life expectancy of mosquitoes and by 10 the life expectancy of worms. Today, we have worms that live the equivalent of a thousand human years, a thousand human years equivalent. These are the Methuselah worms. And scientists don't do these Methuselah worms because they love worms. No, uh, they do this so that we can apply to humans. We can have Methuselah humans of a thousand years and more. Why? Because we know immortality already exists. Since 1951, uh, scientists discovered that cancer cells are actually biologically immortal. Cancer cells do not age, and therefore they can live indefinitely. Uh, in fact, that tumor from Henrietta Lacks, who died in 1951, she died, but her tumor is alive. And that is how we know cancer cells stop aging. There is no aging with cancer. That is what is common in all cancers. There is no aging. Cancer stops aging. So we know already that, can that immortality is possible. And cancer discovered it. And cancer didn't go to, to Harvard, to MIT, to the higher school of economics. No, no, no. Cancers didn't go to university or even to school and discovered how not to age. That is why we uh, scientists, engineers will discover that too. Additionally, we know there are also other cells that are immortal, like germ cells, the germ cells that we all humans have or all organisms, multicellular organisms. Uh, germ cells do not age. They are also called biologically immortal. And even hydras and some medusas and some other small organisms, they are also biologically immortal. That doesn't mean that they don't die. If you kill them, they die, but they don't age and they could live indefinitely forever. In fact, bacteria, the first life forms in the planet, they are biologically immortal. When they divide, when they multiply, multiply symmetrically, they do not age. They do not age. So aging, stop aging is possible. And my friend Aubrey de Grey uh, was actually ridiculed in 2005 by MIT Technology Review. They called him charlatan. What is incredible is that uh, a few years later, in 2019, uh, MIT said, He's actually right. Old age is over, if you want it. We can cure cancer. We can stop cancer. And my friend Ray Kurzweil also talks about the three bridges to immortality. Bridge one, finish it now, simple things, sleep well, eat well, do exercise, etc., etc. Now bridge two with the first biotechnology treatments, and then bridge three with the first nanotechnology treatments until we reach artificial intelligence at superhuman levels and immortality in the 2040s. Many magazines, publications are talking about this. Google has declared that they will solve death, that death is a technical problem and it will have a technical solution. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook and his wife, are donating all their fortune, all their money to cure all diseases, including aging. And Microsoft has said that they will solve cancer. Now that we have sequenced the human genome, we will solve cancer as a computer virus. This will be the largest industry in the world. There is a growing ecosystem of billions and billions, soon trillions and trillions of dollars. Also, the Nobel Prize winner in medicine in 2012 uh, was given to a 
Japanese scientists who discovered rejuvenating a cell. Today, we know that changing a few genes, we can actually rejuvenate cells. This is incredible. This was science fiction uh, 20 years ago, but today we know just changing a few genes, we can rejuvenate cells. So by 2045, I plan to be younger than today. Younger, not older, younger, but not with face up. No, no, not face up with biotechnology, with rejuvenation technologies. And so I welcome you all to come to Madrid in October. We are organizing the Transvision Conference about the future is the Global Transhumanist Summit in Madrid. And read the death of death if you don't want to die. Actually, if you write my book, you are guaranteed not to die. So read the book. It's coming out in the next few weeks in Moscow, all over Russia. And uh, thank you so much. Let's meditate about the future. The future is beautiful, full of, of opportunities, but there is always yin and yang. So let's look to the bright side, to the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are muted. Uh, thank you very much, Jose. It's uh, exciting as always. I always admire your presentations. Yeah. So uh, we have now now ten minutes to for for, for discussions. Uh, I see some questions uh, questions to Anna in the in the in the chat. Anna, please please go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm here. Oh. Uh, please uh, please answer okay. the questions in the chat. Okay, uh, the first question is about uh, uh, human capital and human potential. And uh, yes, I agree, these two concepts are very clear and uh, uh, they are um, uh, um, uh, very uh, to each other. And I should say that we analyzed the literature and noticed that uh, even in different fields of science, uh, uh, these concepts uh, have uh, different meanings. Um, but in general, uh, uh, there are very close, and we, we can uh, uh, use them both. And the second uh, question is about um, what we will do if uh, robots uh, will uh, work. Uh, um, and uh, how we will earn money. Uh, so uh, uh, here, uh, here is two points. Uh, the first one is uh, is about um, uh, uh, universal basic income, and uh, the second one is uh, that digital and bioeconomy uh, requires not less workers, but even more workers. Uh, but it uh, um, it imposes uh, more strength uh, requirements and requires highly qualified, for example, uh, to uh, to maintain complex equipment. So I think we will need to work <laughs> the next uh, decade. Okay. So uh, any more any more questions to our presenters? Uh, I, I don't see I don't see the uh, the hands up. Okay, may, may I ask a, a question from uh, from uh, Jose? Jose, what do you think if if it happens, if it happens and people will be mortal, uh, it will be very different for, for different uh, different uh, uh, nations, for, for for people who 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 has money who doesn't have money, and it creates a lot of problems. What do you, what do you think about this and how we should uh, we should be uh, what what should, should we do to be well p p prepared to, to this? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I think this is going to happen, and I want to say it openly. I do not plan to die. Not only I don't plan to die, I plan to be younger in the future because the objective is rejuvenation biotechnology, and there are top scientists in Russia, in Japan in China, in the USA, Germany, England, in Spain, working on this. And it will be 
free. This is the good thing. It will be free. It will be like the COVID vaccine. The COVID-19 vaccine is given to everybody. And I repeat, if the whole world has mobilized for a small virus, a small virus, this is not big pandemic like the Spanish flu of 100 years or the Black Plague. This is a small pandemic and the whole world has mobilized and the whole world will be vaccinated for free in one year. More will be done for immortality. It will be free. But also let me explain to you why it will be free. Uh, for two reasons. First, because we are very cheap chemically. We are basically water bags. We are 70% water and the other part of our body is carbon, nitrogen, potassium, calcium. We don't cost $100 in raw materials. A human is a machine of $100. Therefore, to keep alive a machine of $100, it will cost basically nothing. And number two, right now, the medical system, the health system puts billions and billions of dollars in the last two years of life and still people die. Now it will be the opposite. You will put that money at the beginning so that people don't age. And if you don't age, you will not get disease, you will not get cancer, you will not get heart attacks. So actually, the health budget will go down, down, because we will not age. There will be more money, not less, more money because health costs down. Okay, okay, thank you very much. It's in chapter four of my book. In chapter okay. four, you need to read okay. chapter four. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Kuniko, uh, are you with us? Still, I don't see you. I guess, I guess she she left. I want to ask her a question. Okay, uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll ask Anna. Uh, Anna, what do you think about this uh, this presentation of uh, by made by Jose? How it how it relates to to, to the results of, uh, of your study? <laughs> it is really a very very interesting presentation, and uh, you see many technologies um, um, uh, uh, about uh, about what I said before. Uh, can be used for immortality, <laughs> and uh, of course, I, I, I'm not sure that it will uh, in 2045. But I, I think uh, rather or sooner we will um, go to, to mortality. Yes, the only thing I don't like in uh, uh, Joseph's presentation is uh, four times life of mosquitoes. <laughs> it is the <laughs> only thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask you, K K Kuniko, you. Uh, yeah. I I know that uh, there are many s societal problems in Japan, yeah. and uh, people work more and more, and people in Japan work very hard, as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Uh, if uh, if uh, artificial intelligence will we will uh, take care of many many works which which they have now. What what people will do in Japan? Will they work less, or they will still work very hard? And do do you have any plans about um, basic income and uh, this stuff? What what your foresight study tells about this? You are muted, please. It seems you are muted, Kunika. Could you switch on your mic? Let's... Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. now, yes. No, okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. It's a good question. Actually, our government announced that uh, we shouldn't work very hardly, so we must reduce the uh, working time. So now it's uh, 40 uh, hours per week. But now it, it will be 38 uh, to the 37, I guess, and no more overwork. However, this is uh, very uh, different between a young generation and the elder uh, generation.
And now uh, many people is staying at home because of COVID-19. And uh, it seems uh, this uh, lifestyle is very um, good for um, elderly people, but not young people, because young people is really missing the people and the human. Uh, so therefore, um, uh, it depends, depends on the company and the um, uh, generation. But uh, I feel um, I'm so happy to stay at home because uh, I can concentrate and that doesn't need to commute. And especially in Japan, uh, the commute uh, time is one and a half an hour. This is the average, in, especially in Tokyo area. So, which means it's uh, going to office and return to the house. It takes three hours per day. So, which is not, it's just not wasting time, I should say, but uh, uh, but uh, people is now staying at home. So, so they, people is changing the, some, um, the room at the house, and they make a very small isolated uh, room at, at the house. So, but uh, I think uh, mm, this, li this lifestyle is uh, maybe it's uh, changing some of our so social issue as well. So, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to ask Kirill because we didn't ask you any questions. What do you think? How the how the innovative models of funding healthcare? Uh, should um, should it take into account uh, these new de developments when people will live much much longer maybe they they will be even younger and uh, so on uh, how, how the whole system might might well, change uh, well i suppose innovative funding will be uh, the only option in such circumstances because uh, uh, immortality will lead uh, to a huge uh, raise in uh, population on our planet, and uh, so the uh, offer of uh, labor work will also increase, and uh, all these people should have some work, should make uh, some money, uh, should participate in gross domestic product, and uh, so on. And uh, so our society will uh, need new uh, business uh, concepts uh, to uh, make them all uh, work somewhere. And I think innovative funding uh, will be the only uh, way of progress <laughs> for such a development. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would like to, to, to thank all, all our people who, who presented this uh, this very nice very nice stuff. And uh, uh, actually, it, it was a great pleasure to, to, to see all of you. I hope I hope the uh, next time in in autumn, this autumn, we'll have a chance to see each other physically, and not not online. And uh, uh, I would like to thank all of you to, to to wish you good health and immortality, probably <laughs> yes, to all of you. And uh, I would like to, to thank also our t t translators who, who, who did the, the, the job. Uh, thank you very much and see you see you again. I just wanted to tell you we have two, two, two more sessions uh, two more sessions uh, this afternoon, and uh, they will be uh, devoted to foresight studies. How foresight should c c contribute to science technology policy? How they will help to develop new cities? And uh, what is new in foresight studies? They will be, they must be very interesting. So I invite all of you to participate. Jose, you wanted to, to say something? Oh, no, this is just no. live ah, just long just... and prosper. Live long okay. and prosper. Okay, good. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, and uh, see you on the next sessions. Bye bye. Bye bye.